So I'm really psyched about this. <laughs> Um, this started actually longer than 11 years ago. I had been at a, a winemaking uh, event that Kevin Addix was speaking at. He used to be the representative of the Maryland wine industry. And this was in, I think it was in Prince George's County. And he was talking about Maryland wines. And I was interested in wine, always have been, and particularly red. And <laughs> he was... Um, he was talking about Maryland and he said, you know, the problem in Maryland is we have a terrible reputation for wine, but he said it's not the grapes, it's the winemakers. Because winemaking in Maryland was largely an amateur endeavor. People, you know, had a couple of acres, they figured they wanted to do wine, they made wine. It wasn't necessarily great, but they made wine. And that was one thing he said that was, that was really important. And then he said, Montgomery County sits in, I think it's the UC Davis Zone 4, if I remember correctly. And it was the zone where you can grow European reds. And at that point, I said, I'm very interested. Because, <laughs> because we're sitting in this place with European red potential, and we knew it was going on across the river with Northern Virginia, and that they had this great wine country, and we didn't have any of that. And we could have been replicating what Northern Virginia was able to do. And I started down the path of doing a little bit of research. I went out to California, I went to a couple of crush pads. What you're gonna see across there is a crush pad. Wineries around the bay would bring wine to a crush pad, they would crush it there, they'd put it in tanks or in um, barrels, and then either their winemaker or the, the companies or the farm's winemaker would make the wines. And I was fascinated, and what really fascinated me, they told me how much their equipment cost. I knew something about the price of grapes, and they had all these barrels lining the room that people had paid for to be made there. And I added up the price of all the barrels, and I realized the total value of the barrels was multiples of the equipment they bought, which told me there's money to be made here. And I thought that, you know, in the Ag Reserve, Preserving the ag reserve depends on agriculture remaining profitable. And my thought was bringing grapes into the ag reserve, grapes are the number four crop if they leave in a box, and the number two crop if they leave in a bottle in terms of value. And I thought if we could drive grapes into the ag reserve, we could give the farmers a crop that would make them happy to stay farmers in the Ag Reserve, and I wanted to help stabilize the Ag Reserve and make sure people didn't get tired of agriculture and want out of that. So this was the kind of interesting beginning to this, and then I met with Kevin. Kevin didn't uh, talk to me more about it. I then met with Keith. We had a meeting with the university system, not just one person, but University of Maryland, um, the, the Ag Extension people in Montgomery County, and everybody kind of concurred that this was a place that we could go to. And that's the beginning of this. And we took a lot of time. It, it was a long time, probably could have been done faster than 11 years. Uh, my, my consolation is this is open before the purple line. <laughs> so <laughs> that's one accomplishment. And, uh, and I think it's also a tribute to what we're capable of doing when we really think about what we're doing. And I'm really happy that we were out here for a meeting with the folks in the town of Poolsville. There was understandable trepidation about what are you going to do to our golf course on the edge of our town. And we talked about it and we engaged them in the process. And I'm happy to see that the commissioners of Poolsville are here and they like this project. <laughs> and that's a good thing. So we get to show off this amazing facility you know, not just an event center, but the crush pad next door. It's going to make an enormous difference, I believe, for Montgomery County. Uh, we had very few, very few farms in the grape business before. And that's one of the sad things, is if they understood Maryland's law about grapes, if you're a winery in Maryland and you want a grape, you've got to buy Maryland grapes before you buy out-of-state grapes. I've been growing grapes all day long if I knew that, um, because it's a guaranteed market. So we've got... We've got a market, we're gonna develop a market up here. I remember when Sugarloaf was the only winery up here, and now there are multiple wineries up here, and there are good wineries. People have proven time and time again now 
that it was never the grapes, it was always the winemakers. And the winemakers who learned winemaking and set up shop in Montgomery County have shown that you can, you can grow grapes here and produce wine that's the equal of anything that's coming out of California. And so Maryland has the potential and we have the potential to be the center of this. And when you think of all the other ancillary benefits, wine, wine growing requires a workforce that trims vines. And one of the interesting things is those agricultural workers are needed in grapes when they're getting out of the work they do on farms. And so now this extends the employment for people longer into the year. That's not a little thing up here. So that's a real benefit. And the amount of revenue that's going to be generated from tourism, it's not just the, the wine and the farms themselves, it's the hotels and the restaurants. And anybody who goes to California, and if I go out there, I always do a two-day tour of Napa and Sonoma. It's one hotel night, God knows how many meals, and there's a lot of money gets spent. And this is going to mean a lot of money gets spent in Montgomery County and Poolsville, which has suffered from disinvestment and, and lack of other activities. I expect we'll see a boom in activities to reflect this facility and what we're doing here. And I'm confident that other farmers will, as we already see happening, turn themselves more and more to grapes. It's going to be good for Montgomery County's economy. It's going to generate a ton of tax revenue, which is a good thing. It's going to enhance the agricultural's role in Montgomery County's economic health. And it's really exciting. And, you know, some people say this could have a $22 million imprint on the local economy annually. This is real money we're talking about. And, you know, as a county that sometimes struggles to fund all the things we need, we need as much economic vibrancy as we can create. And I can't think of any better way of creating good vibrancy than with a good bottle of wine. And I've already sampled the first red. And I have to say the red is a really good red. Um, I'm, I'm very excited about this. So, you know, we're seeing and we're going to see more tourism up here. We're going to see more activity up here. We're going to see more opportunities up here. We're going to see more jobs up here. The university system, Montgomery College and universities of Shady Grove will have wine growing programs. And this is what you grow wine. Wine making programs and grape growing. And that's important because the next generation of farmers, I can imagine, not being a farmer myself, but a kid may say, I don't want to do hay for the next 30 years. But you might want to have a vineyard for the next 30 years and be, be hands-on in the production of something that other people appreciate. So I think we're on the cusp of something new and something really interesting. And I'm, I'm glad this actually happened. I want to thank a bunch of people. I mean, first of all, I kept putting money requests into the state legislature to help us get this done. I want to thank the state legislators, those who are here and those who aren't here, for going through the process and getting the county the money we needed to actually build this facility. I want to thank the town of Poolsville for your support. If you all had stomped your feet and said no, this would have been really difficult. So your acceptance of this is really, really important. I want to thank uh, Kevin, who's not here, but I want to thank Keith because, you know, to some people, this is a crazy idea. I guarantee you that not everybody I told about this said, of course, why didn't we think of that? Um, that's not the reaction. And, you know, Keith listened, and then he did his research and reached the same conclusion that I did. This made sense economically. It made sense in Montgomery County. I want to thank him for that. And I want to thank Mark Weller for executing, executing this stunningly beautiful place. This is really a landmark. And I want to thank the council that always had to tell the executive that they supported the request from the state. So a lot of things came into play to make this possible. Um, I am just so glad to be here to see this. It is, um, it's really a dream come true in terms of what, you know, recognizing the potential of this ag reserve and being able to take it, I hope, to the next level. And I think all of us are gonna benefit from it, and I really appreciate the work that everybody did to make this possible. Thank you so much for coming. I'd never thought these many people would be here for the opening of a winery.